Good evening. At 6.30, we have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. And first up for general information is who's first, Bill? Mr. Noonan. Oh, Mr. good. Good. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, well, uh, I'm here to talk about uh, Rayo's lot. Uh, after considerable delay, we were finally able to buy uh, Rayo's. Um, and after receiving enthusiastic support from the fire department and the building inspector, we demoed the, uh, the building in February of 2021. Um, the, uh, I sent to Bill earlier today, and hopefully he was able to share with you a draft uh, sketch really from our engineer about a, a planned use. I just brought that up in the screen. Oh, great. Thank you, Bill. First, first we've seen it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, the building was demoed. The, the crater, the hole, the basement was filled. Uh, and uh, we leveled it off with some uh, TRG. The, uh, Rayo's Rayo's, the Rayo sign is still there. We simply covered it with a top. And uh, other than that, nothing else has been done to the site. Uh, we have not. Did she, did she get it? Uh, I'll go check. We haven't attempt to address any water issues in this sketch uh, because we thought it was premature. We wanted to get feedback from you folks first uh, before we started spending real money on our engineers and water. M Mr. Noonan. We, I can barely understand you. I'm not quite sure why. Okay, I'm sorry. It's not loud enough. It's loud enough. The sound is uh, muttered or something. I, I, I don't know. I can hear. I can understand them. Bill, okay. can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can but hear you. Yes, you're a little muffled. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, I don't know what the technical issue would be. I'll get closer to the mic. Um, anyway, the, uh, we don't, at the present intent is not to have any structures on the, uh, on the parcel. Uh, it's intended to be used for inventory storage for uh, uh, Lewis Subaru. We're proposing keeping the grade of the Rayo's lot exactly as it is today. Um, so this is for Lewis Subaru parking. The, um, Can you hear the engineers suggested that keeping it at the present grade instead of raising it to match the grade of uh, the Lewis uh, dealership uh, was, would be safer because of sight lines for traffic uh, coming in and out of both lots. Um, so we intend to, right now anyway, keep the, uh, the grade as it is. As you can see, uh, the, I don't know what color it comes across to you guys, but we did uh, get the 20% green space on the lot. Uh, the several spaces at the back of the lot, um, we intend to keep open in case uh, uh, customers who pull in uh, want to park and actually walk around and look at inventory. We're uh, planning on trying to drop in a precast set of stairs uh, to allow foot traffic between uh, the, Ray the Rayo's lot and the Lewis lot, um, some meaningfully wide uh, eight, 10 foot stair uh, staircase. We intend to keep the same continue the same look, the stone wall that's in front of the Lewis dealership, uh, we would intend to uh, mimic in, in front of uh, Rayo's. Uh, there will be shrubbery, uh, the shrubbery and tree decisions will be made kind of in conjunction with dealing with the DOT uh, on their taking proposal, because as you all know, they're proposing to drop trees uh, various places throughout the uh, uh, throughout the land uh, adjacent to where they're taking. So there will be trees, some type of greenery. We just haven't gotten that far yet. 
Um, the lighting, we haven't done anything on lighting, but we will try to make everything as uh, humanly possible, uh, consistent with whatever uh, the uh, dealership presently has just for aesthetics. Uh, we're open to suggestions if people want some other type of lighting, but that was the uh, intent right now is to uh, try to match everything already on the Lewis side. Um, Terrells is on the... So we, we expect to be back before the board, certainly one or more times uh, over the next uh, few months. So we just want your initial comments um, before we start digging in deeper. Yeah, the other thing is uh, during the interim, the next X number of months before we get final approval from the board, uh, uh, we would like permission to store 10, 12 vehicles on the lot, just as it is. It's uh, TRG, there's no pavement there. We don't intend to do anything, uh, obviously, until we get uh, planning board approval. Okay, the only thing that I see is the, we do not like the parking. You've got seven parking spaces, 15 feet off of the road. We want to see the 50 foot, no parking zone there. So the way this is laid out, we have seven parking in the front within a 50 foot setback. We like to see 50 feet of no parking. All right, and, um, and the reason for that, just so I'm clear. It's in the zoning bylaws. We like to see, we don't want to see the, the black, we don't want to see the parking right up against the town, the state road, the, the, the road. We want to see a, a little bit of green space there. And so that's consistent. And that's consistent. The, that's consistent across all of Route 9 and all of the areas. So you'd prefer the green space in the front instead of the back? Right. Pardon? Is that what you're saying? The green space in, more green space in the front than in the back? Would you repeat that, please? I, I'm just clarifying. You're looking for more green space in the front. That's correct. Of, we, the, the 50 feet in the front, we want. We would like to see green space, no parking, no blacktop. That provision is in the site plan approval section. It is not mandatory, but it is strongly encouraged. If some people have lots that don't support parking anywhere else, but uh, this is not one of those. This isn't a hardship. Right. All right, any other comments? Everything else looks fine. Okay. Drainage, uh, how are you gonna address the drainage? Well, we're, as I said in the beginning, we haven't done anything with dealing with water. We wanted to get your initial response before we spent uh, engineer time figuring out the water. Okay. But that, that's our next step once now that I've gotten your feedback. So so how many total cars will be situated on this lot for, for sale? Um, well, as as proposed here, it would be 35. But based on Jim's comment, we'll obviously end up losing some of those spaces in front. So it would be, okay. I don't know, 20 something. Whatever the map turns out to be. Okay. Anything else? Looks fine other than that. Okay. All right, gentlemen, I'll let you guys go so uh, other people uh, don't have to be here on. Aren't you involved with the uh, sale of the property next to the uh, Norwatak Inn? Uh, yes, I am, but I'll, I'll stay if, if you want me to. Uh, I thought- well, I, th I think you might, might be helpful because uh, uh, the moder uh, not the moderator, <laughs> the surveyor is going to be be uh, presenting that. I think right after no, you. No, I know Randy. So then I'll stay around. Yeah. Okay. Well, th thanks, guys. All right. Oh. Thank you. Mr. Dwyer is next. Uh, next up was Kurt Shumway. Yeah. Hello, all. Been a long time. I don't know how to uh, proceed here. Tom's got some information. I'm looking to just replace some signage with 
basically a different name, same size. I think most of my signs when I got put them on the building or the monument side, uh, signs were uh, smaller than the allowed sizes anyhow. So I'm just trying to get uh, the okay on that. So I can proceed with uh, a very significant lead time to get some deadlines taken care of. What's the address on that cart? Oh boy, it's the Holiday Inn. I think it's 401 or 400. What's that side of the street? That's the even side. 400. That's 400. That's 400. That's 400. 400, Russell. Okay. So let me see if I can get those the signs up. I it didn't look like it was a major change of any sort. But it looked like most of the signs are either the same size or a tad bit smaller. That was my intention. So this that this would be sort of an easy process. So it's five pages. Um, so it's currently Holiday Inn Express. There are three signs. There's a monument sign, there's an entrance sign, and a uh, building sign, all of which, as was just mentioned, were smaller than the maximum allowed back when we got this thing back in uh, 2000 when it actually went up. So those are the locations of the new signs. And then I guess that is sign number one. And that is sign number two. And that would be sign number three. You know, as I mentioned, I see no, 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 I don't see a problem with the signs. If anything, they're a little bit smaller, which is good. Other than that, they're pretty much the same height wise and everything else. I agree. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, signage change. Second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. You should be all set, Kurt. I'll get, a, I'll get our official notice off to the building inspector, even though I think he's listening. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Have a great night, guys. Nice you to see you all. Thanks. Nice to see you all. Nice to see you again. Take care. I haven't seen you in a long time. Uh, I'm assuming Randy's next. Uh, yes, he is. Okay, I have two ANRs. Mr. Dwyer, are you capable of putting those on the screen one at a time? Jekinowski first, please. I think oh, that one me, will be let me easier to deal with. See. Uh, that's the Shattuck Road plan. Uh, Roosevelt. No, it's Roosevelt. Oh, Roosevelt. I don't see that from you. Really? I sent it quite a while ago. Yeah, I gotta say, I remember seeing it. Okay. Uh, I probably sent it a week and a half ago at least. I am not um, 8 Middle Street. No. Um, 67. Let's see. It's, uh, it's called Jekinowski something or other. Huh. I am not seeing anything from you. Uh, I have the uh, 206 Russell Street, but uh, I'm not uh, seeing anything else from you. Okay. Well, it, this is the 8 Middle Street one, Randy? No. It's, it's Roosevelt. on Roosevelt Street. It's uh, Jack Jekinowski's. And what I'll, I mean, if you can't find it, what I'll do is it's on my office computer, but I can access it from home. But 
I'll ha I have to do some finagling. So we can deal with Russell Street first. I'll go send you guys the the other one, and we can deal with it later tonight, hopefully. Okay. Yeah, I can. Uh, I can certainly bring it up if you could just send it to me. Okay, I will do that. Okay, so let me bring up the other one, the Norwatic Inn. Yes, please. Okay. And. Uh, okay, like Randy it. sent it on 326. Okay. The uh, other, you're talking the other one, Jimmy? I'm talking Jekinowski. Okay. This is oh. on uh, Roosevelt Street. All right, well, well, we can deal with Russell Street since it's up there, and then hopefully Bill can find the other one. Okay. Okay, so 206 Russell Street, which is the Norwatic Inn in the former location of Walter's Propane Campus Pizza, uh, Mi Tierra, et cetera, et cetera, which has burned down. Uh, I showed this plan to you guys previously, uh, just to go over the uh, parking and green space situation on the lot that the motel is on. Uh, and so everything meets the requirements. Both lots have at least 200 feet of frontage. Both lots have at least 40,000 square feet of area because we're in the aquifer. The lot number one, which is the motel lot, has uh, enough green space parking uh, to satisfy the bylaw and there are no uh, building setback violations by moving this line. Uh, basically, we're taking one lot, which was this whole parcel was a condominium, and they're going to decondominiumize the motel and uh, sell this second lot. And to, I don't know who, but uh, at some point, lot two will be back to you for site plan approval. I know there was talk of some lighting issues in the back from Mr. Sarzinski. Uh, I believe there might be one tall light that's still back there that, that yeah. is on. Is that correct, Mike? I'm just looking at, uh, there, no light standard shall be taller than 15 feet. That's in the bylaw. And any outdoor lighting fixture shall be shielded so that it does not produce a strong direct light beyond the property boundaries so um and there, there was there were it was as if there were a couple suns there shining over onto the backyard of people at east three commons and i think generally one was fixed pretty well but there's still another one that's not shielded it's just a light okay and i i'm aware of that the uh Attorney Noonan is involved in this sale. He's aware that that light is there. And I believe that that's something that can be addressed when the site plan comes for lot yeah. two. Uh, it looks to me like it's a, a pole that the electric company put there, quite frankly, as, as tall as it is. I haven't seen anybody, uh, a private person, put something like that up. I have one like that in front of my office building that we asked the electric company to install and they did. Yeah, I'm um, sure it so can be resolved. It looks similar to it. So other than that, I mean, it's, it's cut and dry. Yeah. Okay. Is that because light pole on lot two or lot one, Randy? It's on lot one. Uh, would we go for site plan approval on lot two? We will have no authority on lot one. All right. Uh, if talk to David Noonan, are you still with us? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I've heard uh, everything. I did uh, call the Patels who run the motel, and I was told that um, the utility king company came out and actually disconnected two lights. Um, I have no personal knowledge that that is true, but that's what I was told by the Patels. They indicated they're quite willing to cooperate in solving the, the, the real or perceived light problem with the, the back neighbors. Yeah. So I don't think it's an issue if they need okay. if they need to add a shield to a light, we will do so. Uh, uh, it's not we, 
um, we will request the Patels to do so. The Patels want the property to come out of condominium, so they're motivated. Bill, did, did you tell us earlier in this process that we would have to reopen the old, old site plan review for the hotel and amend that was, it? That was a possibility. Um, that was when, uh, when this was first proposed and Jim had remembered the, the parking deficiencies of the site right. as a whole. Uh, and I think Randy has now addressed that this, okay. this stands by itself now. Um, uh, Bill had raised issues about uh, access to the water lines, the water and sewer lines. And uh, we um, are building cross easements in the deeds when the properties come out of condo uh, to solve that. So both properties will be able to go on, uh, on to the other property to, to address any water or sewer uh, line issue. So Mike, is there still one light that shines? Yeah, but it's, it's not, it still shines, correct, but it's not as it was previously where it was just blaring into the backyards of people there. I mean, they couldn't sleep at night, you know? Right. I, I know. I don't go over there and look all the time, but you know, out of, out of, disc out of proper disclosure, I, I live on the East Creek Commons, but I, I live on a side where I can't see that light, but, but a couple of the uh, uh, owners here approach me concerning this. I remember that they were they were concerned about the light that was shining back there, and they have since shut off one or two yeah. of them, but there's still one. I think is, there's still one, yeah. Now, is that one that exists a problem, or is it okay? It could be improved. The guy said it's been 65 70% improved, okay? It's not 100%, but if they could shield it so it shines down, I think that would be a, a big improvement. But I think it's much higher than 16, 15 feet, too. Oh, it's probably on a pulse. I'm sure it is. Oh, yeah. Let's require it that it be a proper height. Why not? All right, I'll address both of these issues with the Patels and see okay. what they can do. Who owns the, the, the motel now? It's an LLC that's controlled by um, uh, a family by the last name of Patel, P-A-T-E-L. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the ANR provided once the lighting is addressed on lot number one, provided the lighting is addressed on lot number one. Second. Oh, you want a, you want a motion? I'll make that motion. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. We motion and a second that... The, the A and R can be signed as it is, but once the lighting has been addressed on lot number one, um, that, like we've talked about. So don't sign this until the lighting is addressed? That is correct. Can I deal directly with Bill to get Bill's satisfaction that the lighting has been addressed? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to keep dragging this on for two more weeks if they can get the lighting addressed in the next couple of days, that's all. So what you're saying, Jimmy, is Mr. Noonan will report back to Bill that the lighting is indeed fixed, and at that point, you would you somebody would sign the plan. That is correct. Yeah. Just so we can, I mean, you've been kind enough to get this thing moving. It seems like we've been looking at this now for about for well, at least a couple of months. I know that I know they're in a hurry to get. They got some buyers that are that are anxious, and so we that we don't. I don't want to drag it out for two more weeks if we don't. We have. don't want to kill the deal for you. Yeah. I mean, it seemed like a simple enough thing to address. Even if they're going to pull a plug on the light. No, the problem I don't think is what I don't think they want to pull a plug. It's one again. I mean, they want illumination back there for parking, and I understand that for safety and security and good things like that. Just, just make it right. Okay. The problem before was the time frame with Eversource. I believe they had put in the work order a year ago, January, February. And when I started in May, we were getting the complaints on this. And I was able to reach out to a contact through Eversource, through Hadley. 
and within two weeks they took care of the, the little bit they did so you may want to reach out and i'll see if i have it in my emails the contact that i had reached out you know for the town had two issues as well that i was able to get them right out there but they're they're way behind okay Would, okay. would it, I mean, you, Jimmy, you got enough people on this. Does it make sense to hold it or just, you know, sign it and be done with it? And then you got an attorney and a building inspector working on it. Yeah, but once we sign it, we have no power. We, we don't have a, a club over their head anymore. And I mean, I don't know the people very much. So um, it's not that I don't trust anybody, but we're consistent that we do it this way. I just want to continue to be that way. Agree. It's not like this is the first time we've brought up the lighting. You mean okay? All right, I'll I'll get it done and I'll get back to Bill Dwyer. Okay, so there's a motion. Right. We have motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Okay. okay, so Bill, did you have any luck finding that email? Yeah, yes, I did. Uh, I did find it. Uh, Gentlemen, I'm going to leave. Thank you very much. Thanks, Attorney. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Yeah. Okay, there it is. So. Beautiful. Okay, so this is 35 Roosevelt Street. John and Leona Jekinowski. And this plan, or a different iteration of this plan was before the board, I don't know, five, eight, 10 years ago to put the lamp, parcel A and APR and uh, various other things. So now they're trying to do some estate planning and come to find out that the, uh, what's called parcel D uh, on this plan was comprised of the remainder of a previous lot. And by cutting out the parcel C that I did previously, there was not enough area left in that lot to be a, a viable building lot. So I'm adding to it. If you look up into the top middle of the plan, there's a parcel D detail. And what it is is the original lot was 29,587 square feet. And so I had to add 418 square feet to that, which came out of the original parcel B, which is behind it, and which is now called parcel B revised. And that was and still is not a buildable lot uh, standing alone. So in essence, all I'm doing is moving 418 square feet from what was parcel B to now what's parcel D. Everything else stays the same. And I have a note over under where you guys sign that says the endorsement is for parcel B revised and D only because everything else is as it was on the original plan. Actually, that's fairly simple, Randy. I, as I looked at the plan, I said, this is gonna be a nightmare <laughs> to figure out. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. And to the south of parcel D, what's that? That's a right of way? Or that is what's called parcel C. And that is indeed, uh, that's the, it's not a right of way per se. It's, it's fee, land and fee that allows APR to access parcel A. They're very particular these days about being able to access any land that they have put into the APR program. They wanna make sure they can get there without having to use easements or anything like that. So, so that, they're only gonna put A into, into the APR? A is the only land and that's been done already. Right, okay. Yeah. So parcel B is not APR. Correct. 
That's well, that's strange. What? Well, that's, their, that's their fortunate. business. It's fortunate because if it was, we would I would we would have lost this building lot because I wouldn't yeah. be able to take this 418 square feet out of it. Okay. So parcel C is how you get to parcel B as well. Uh, yeah. Or you get there through the parcel E. I mean, oh, and I they're right. all the same. I think that parcel C is just the right to to access parcel A for APR purposes. Okay. Okay. Entertain the motion to approve it. So moved. Second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, so what I'll do, Jimmy, I will get the form A, email that to you, and then once you've had it, I'll we'll set something up where I'll come see you and get the plan signed. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah that'd just be the minimum filing fee, whatever it is. Okay. Well, I'll just I'll get it to you and you can take care of it. Okay. All right. That's good. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys. I think that's enough for me. Okay. Thank you, Randy. Thanks, Randy. Hey guys. Mr. Albano. Yes. Attorney Albano. Okay, so I'm here. Uh, my clients, the Heirloom Collective, uh, they uh, received the adult use marijuana establishment permit last May. The bylaw says that it has to be renewed after one year. The bylaw also says that the renewal period is in January and February of each year. So this past January and February, we were not quite uh, a year into our permit. Uh, next January and February, we will be well past our year uh, into the permit. And so it's just an inquiry into how best to proceed. I understand that we are the first and only in this category, uh, and there is no precedent. When is it up? When is it the one year up, Al? Uh, the decision is uh, May 6th, 2020. Okay. How's business? Busy. Yeah. Now, do we have to build? Do we have to hold a public hearing on that, or do we just have to? Can we new, just renew it? Uh, uh, I think. I'm looking. Think three, I'll have Bill talk. Go ahead. Yeah, I just uh, pulled up the section of the bylaw, so let me see if I can share that. Uh, I think you have to publish. Oh, there it is. Okay, so thirty point four point five point seven. Right. Uh, so it's a, a one year, then two successive two years, and then no need for final review thereafter. So it doesn't seem to require a uh, public hearing. Right, but it does say that publication of a notice of the request for renewal shall be made in the same manner as would be required in an original application for a special permit. So and that would, say, it says that it'll be granted automatically unless there's a written objection. Right. It would make more sense to do it on the anniversary of the uh, approval. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, publication. So I guess we have to publish a notice of, well, first of all, we have to receive a request for renewal. Yeah. Then we publish a notice of request for renewal. And, um, And if there are no objections, we can, uh, the renewal is automatically approved. 
Um, do we have to notify? It doesn't say we got to notify the about it. You're gonna just gonna publish it in a newspaper. It just says Correct. publication. Publication. Um, what do you think the rationale of that is for behind that was? Sir? So it says in the same manner. Does that mean two weeks? Required for an original application for a special permit. So yes, that would be twice a week for two weeks before the public hearing, the date upon which it will be approved automatically. No, 20 days from the first publication of notice. I would suggest we just go ahead and do it. Yeah. yeah. You file you file a request. We'll uh, we'll do the publication twice a week. Um, and um, we can call the uh, cost of publication the filing fee. Okay. So the renewal fee will be what it costs us to publish. Okay. Um, yeah. And then um, if we don't get any objection. It'll be allowed automatically. If we do receive uh, an objection, we will then schedule, at that point, we will schedule a um, public hearing with publication and mailing notice. Is the request for renewal just a, a letter to the board or is it on the, uh, the, the, the zoning permit uh, application form? If you, if you got the original copy of the uh, application, Al, just email that to Bill. I'm sorry, do what? If you have the original application, you filed for it, a copy yes, of I'm it. Sure we, I'm sure just, we have it. Just just scan that and email it to Bill. Okay, yeah, just put, put uh, and, just, uh, and just put renewal right on it or something. Yeah. Request okay. for renewal. All right. Keep it simple. And you'll take care of still, the publication. And just send us a bill. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll put the publication in. I'll just send you the invoice and you pay it. We'll be all set. Great. Okay. This is the first for all of us. So that was renewal period is 1 1 to 228. When did you say that this was the decision was issued? May something? The, 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 May stamp, the, st the stamp on the uh, paperwork received by the town clerk was May 6th, 2020. Okay. So we'll, we'll, I'll put the public hearing in for May 4th, which is the day before for the notice of which, are now, which is the one month from today for the planning board meeting. And uh, you should be all set. Great. Okay. That it? If anyone complains, we'll find out. All right. Wonderful. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of your evening. You too. Thank you. Good. Okay, let me just get a uh, 30.4.5.7. Seven. Okay. Get that out of there. Mr. Comio. It's dark. Um, let me turn this light. Um, so where did we leave off? I, it, I had a meeting with the, um, the town administrator with regards to the MS4 permit. So, um, that if the board recalls will be the, the board, the, the town approved a bylaw back in 
I think it was 2019. Um, but the rules and regulations still have yet to be approved in order to be compliant with the MS4 permit. Um, and so I've um, put the wheels in work to um, convene that stormwater committee that helped prepare the bylaw. Um, and there's going to be a meeting at the end of April in which um, I've invited um, the building inspector, the DPW director, town administrator, um, Jim, if we can choose pinpoint a date, and then the conservation agent. Um, so we still have yet to complete that, but the goal and um, my understanding is that that, that, can, that can be completed by June 30th. Uh, the planning board would just have to schedule a public hearing to adopt those rules and regs for the stormwater. Um, so that was kind of the the last pieces. And and uh, since the last time we met, um, we were looking into convening that stormwater committee one more time to just to tie all the loose ends so that um, it was ready to go uh, and get approved by the planning board as um, the board is the stormwater authority. That'll be an evening meeting, Ken? Um, it doesn't need to be. Um, if, it, if it works better, I know that I think the building inspector and the availability of the person from PVPC that would be doing it had provided daytime meetings, um, okay. but we can, we can work toward work, work with the schedule, Jim, if if it's a night, if it's an evening meeting virtually, any evening is fine. If it's a day meeting, I would prefer a Wednesday. Okay. If that's if that meets everybody, we'll um, make that work. Um, is there a preferred time? On a Wednesday, whatever is good for anybody is good for me. Okay. Ken, is the June 30th, is that a deadline? And if so, for what? June 30th is the deadline, um, is the, is the when, when the state said that all MS4 communities have to be compliant with the new permit. So um, the town is halfway there um, with the bylaw that has, had been adopted, but the bylaw refers to the rules and regs that we briefly talked about um, when we were adopting the bylaw. Um, so there were some bits and pieces that just needed some fine tuning, um, but presuming that it, it's not a big haul, and I think that that's the case, um, the board can schedule a public hearing in either the first or second meeting in June, if not the end of May, if the board meets then. Um, but that, that's, yeah, June 30th is the, is the deadline. Now, is that the extended deadline? Because there was some litigation that was settled and some of the terms were changed. My understanding is that it is the extended deadline. Okay. Um, because it was supposed to be adopted by 2020, um, summer of 2020. And then I think that there was, yes, that litigation that Bill was talking about, as well as the pandemic, I think, which caused um, you know some of the issues regarding that timeline being extended to 2021. Um, so, with regards to MS4, the board will be you know convening a special uh, public hearing at some point in the next couple of months to to finalize those those um, regulations. Um, so that would be the public hearing would be to adopt the rules and regulations the. The bylaw has already been done at town Correct. meeting. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, so that's that's MS4. Um, so I know that I think at the last meeting we, you know, you you had your last few conversations about the um, floodplain. I don't know. I, I think that they're reading the newspaper. I think that there still may be some questions, not necessarily the board but some of the other town regulations that are in place. Um, but what I shared with Jim was basically what was submitted um, to the board at some point. And so I think Jim has 
in his possession what would eventually go to the warrant um right yes right yep. okay and so, i think i have just a couple of very spot edits to do okay. on the rv component okay yeah i think i recall when i was putting it together i was like wait no bill was doing it on the screen share and it wasn't me so yeah i think there was like the connecticut river frontage um was some language that the board wanted to adopt there um so i think that um, based on what, what was submitted and I think my understanding of what has happened in the past two months with regards to this bylaw, um, the board is, is ready to, you know, at least provide its recommendation of approval to the town meeting. Um, I don't know if, if there's been any changes to that, but, you know, I can assist with that however necessary. Um, I, I think that it's compliant based on you know my understanding in in discussions with the floodplain coordinator um but other than that i think you're all settled for that one um this this afternoon it it, it was a minor thing that i i shared um which was and i don't know if if that was exactly what we were discussing at the last meeting but it was the language that uh, Bill had wanted to address with regards to the payment in lieu of housing provision. Um, I know that this was a town meeting warrant article in fall 2020 and that was tabled. Um, so what I shared with you was the language that was used there. I don't know if there was, um, based on our last meeting, if there was a thought with regards to amending that language or if it was addressing it in the rules and regs um, when that came to be to adopt those. Um, yes. But I don't, I don't know, um, Bill, if, if there's any insight you can share with regards to that um, or was it all, were all the edits to be made to the rules and regs based on a lot of the conversation of the board over the past? Oh. I, I normally spend part of Tuesday getting ready for planning board meetings, <clears throat> and I did a closing instead. Oh. So uh, I um, I have to take a look at that, and I will. Um, I, I'm not sure how best we're going to incorporate it because we have some language that is in the proposed bylaw that we really don't like. So I think we have to get that out. The, it set a, a standard of um, uh, judging the affordability component by um, what it would cost the town to complete the job or to do the job, which in fact triggers prevailing wage, which is not a place we want to go. So I think we, we have to do some tidying of that language and get new, new bylaw language into the warrant for the carryover articles. It, in reviewing that bylaw, uh, and I'm gonna, if, if you don't mind, Bill, try to share. Um, in reviewing yeah. that bylaw, I don't recall the language of prevailing wage in the actual bylaw. Oh, it's not so much, hang on a second. Let me, okay. uh, uh, let me get out of this so that I can authorize you to share. Go ahead. Okay, let me just find that. Um, this, where is that? This, um, okay. So again, this was this was the language obviously I provided the board a strike through underlined, which simplified it more, basically understating that the ability to, oh, I think you were talking about this. Well, I think my understanding of the situation based on, based on the idea that the board wanted to adopt a flat fee um, but give the possibility of the developer, if they're able to identify um, wholesale costs or other additional costs and demonstrate that it's less than that, then the board would be able to approve that or 
or, you know, suggest that um, if the applicant or the developer wanted to, um, instead of building on site, provide these fees that the board would accept those fees if they demonstrated that, that acknowledgement um, that um, it was less than the flat fee that was identified. But all of that would be addressed in the rules and regs. Um, I don't know if, you know, in making it simpler, for, sim making it simpler um, based on that is determined as a per unit cost and in accordance with the rules and regs, um, that that's sufficient. But I guess your council would, you know, obviously provide comment on that and, and suggest yes or no, if that was sufficient enough to provide the context by which you're gonna be amending your bylaw. Um, so that was just a, a quick, um, trying to make it as basic as I think the language could be based on the fact that all of the very more technical and the calculations or not, not even the calculations, but the basis of the fees would be handled in the rules and regs that would be later adopted. I like the way you worded it, Ken. I think the one that the, the wording Bill is talking about with the uh, prevailing wage was something the town council recommended at the after the review of the stuff. We never really adopted it, Bill. If I remember, I think that was was what we were questioning. Yeah, it, it was just that it was so close. Everything got so close to the, uh, and I'm just trying to look through the uh, special town meeting warrant to see if I can. Um, yeah, it was after the definitions, which is a long. Um, I think it was warrant article 11. It was Article 16 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Special yeah. Town Meeting, Ken, is the fall one. The fall one. Fall, fall 2020. So it wasn't this one? 1114? Uh, yeah. The, the fall of 2020. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe it is. Um, okay. All right. I, I will. I will. Uh, I'll take another look at that. I'm having trouble just picking my way through and finding that at the moment. That's fine. <laughs> So I guess, I mean, understanding the, the process by which you would amend that warrant language um, and, you know, what, what, I, what I shared with the board was the verbatim what was on the warrant. I guess if it was changed on the floor or suggested change on the floor, I guess the... Yep. I, I, I have to look at that, I did, and I didn't, obviously. Yeah, I, I, I just had recollection that there was something in there that we really didn't like, and then it turned out never got to, we never got to that article. So what we're probably going to do is just see if what the, what the logistics are of, of just rewriting it a little bit, uh, even though it's from last year's warrant. I guess we can ask the select board to reopen the special town meeting warrant from last year to what I'd like to do is get the language in there the way it should be. So we don't have to do um, amendments from the floor. Okay. But you, but I think for the purposes of, of amending this particular bylaw and then doing a separate regulations as, mm -hmm. as it's identified in the bylaw, the language should probably be simpler in the bylaw, right? Yeah. Just referring That's, out to that, okay. Right, no, I agree completely. Um, the other thing in a related theme, if we are going to incorporate the definitions from the revised 
floodplain bylaw into the definitions section as it was set out at the special town meeting warrant. We're gonna to have to figure out how to mechanically do that too. Any thoughts, Mr. I, Mr. Moderator? What? Um, I'm listening very carefully. Um, <laughs> what what I think, because it, I think what we need to do is probably adopt the definitions as we presented them last year. Adopt the floodplain regulations as we have written them. And at the next town meeting, move those definitions to the definition section. Otherwise we are adopting something we don't have yet. Okay, so, but we're gonna open the definitions. We're gonna open the annual town meeting by taking up the articles that didn't get addressed at the special town meeting. But they're gonna be different now. Well, no, if it goes if it goes ahead, using the way you were talking about it, we, we, we adopt the definition section as it was written in October. Okay. Then we proceed further into the meeting. We're now at article whatever, 27, um, the uh, river, uh, the uh, floodplain. We adopt that. <laughs> And then we also adopt the definitions for that. So we amend oh, okay. the, the same article. We amend the definitions twice in one sitting, but right, okay. really in two different meetings. Right, so we, had, we, we would adopt the definition section and then would it come to the Riverfront bylaw, we would amend the section we had just adopted at the special meeting by adding those definitions to it. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. There's mud. So you're going to be opening a special town meeting within the annual town meeting. Is that how you're going to do it, or is everything no. being shifted over to the annual war? I thought I thought everything was being shifted over to the annual town meeting. I have nobody has said anything to me about a special town meeting preceding the annual town meeting. Basically, we would have two meetings. Um, so I don't know anything about that. That's well, new as long as we take up the, the articles at the beginning of the meeting that we didn't get at the special town meeting, I think that would still be okay because we're going to adopt the definition section and the stuff we didn't do last fall, right? Yeah. And then we're going to have a, one or two zoning articles further in the meeting. And one of them would be this riverfront thing where we would add definitions to the definition section that we just adopted earlier in the meeting. It'll be a little bit confusing, but I think it'll, it'll be understandable. Well, my thought was once we dissolved the special town meeting, it's done. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not saying. We right, I'm, special... I'm, just, I'm talking to Bill now, I think. Okay. So I think that in my opinion, whatever was proposed at the uh, special town meeting never got addressed. The meeting got dissolved. So right. I think okay. you can, you can bring it back in any way you want. Okay. Because so we're, we're not, it, it's whole well, you may recall it got dissolved for lack of quorum. So we want to Correct. make sure we don't lose the quorum. <laughs> well, I'll well, tell you with the, uh, with the floodplain bylaw and especially the RV component of the floodplain bylaw on as the last article, I am sure we will hold everyone's attention. Yeah, and, and the okay. goal was not to bring forth the stuff that didn't get addressed at the, at the special town meeting first because it, was, it didn't it get addressed then. It's because you guys have been waiting for this will be the third meeting now. And the feeling was that you didn't want to get dumped on again, so to speak. You've been working on this for a long time. So you might as well get first crack at getting it dealt with. And that's how I understand it. So I don't think you are bound by what was in the warrant last fall. Okay, right, I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. So we're coming in before the consent decree? No, the first after it. Oh, okay.
So then, I, then I guess it it's it's a matter of maybe aligning um, if we are going to be scheduling a public hearing for the MS four regulations, also adopting maybe the um, payment in lieu of regulations as that is a set of regulations for the planning board as well. Adopting what regulations? The payment in lieu of the, um, the, for, the housing. for the affordable housing. Because you have to come up with that calculation based on or you know what 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 that calculation is gonna be and those need to be adopted by the planning board in a regulation. Right. I, I was planning on doing that after we had successfully adopted a town meeting. Right. 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 Uh, yeah, I was I was suggesting um, because I don't think the MS4 um, rules and regs won't be will be adopted after that or probably right. um, in June. So maybe kind of working towards that as a yeah. Well, we'll have one meeting and adopt regulations for MS4 and the other stuff. Yeah. Probably update our fees too because the legal notices, legal notice costs have gone out of sight. Yes, they have. Right now we're charging three hundred and twenty-five dollars for the special permit application, and the legal notices are coming in at three hundred and thirty dollars. Oh wow! Yeah, the last three last day. I'll take that back. Three hundred twenty-four dollars and eighty-six cents was the last one we published, and I'm doing it as briefly as I can to minimize legal ad space. So the board takes responsibility for payment of those um, public notices? Yes. Okay, through your application fees? The, re the reason we're doing that is because we were finding out that once the, it got to be a real headache to withhold approvals until the bills were paid. So we're, we increased our fees to simply cover the costs. And it was working fine until the Gazette ad basically almost tripled in price. Okay. So. Yeah, I, I, I've seen boards, um, boards that have done new um, fees in the past few months um, have been because they, they are respond, they are taking the responsibility to do the public notices and um, th they've upped their prices, I think to up to maybe 500. Um, but then the accounting, you know, obviously for the board can be. Uh, so anyway, okay. Um, all right. So we're going to get these to the uh, town uh, administrator bill, all these warrant articles pretty quick so we can get them. Do they get them into the, what is it? They have to be into the, uh, all the wording have to be in for the town warrant, Randy. You're muted. Randy. You're muted. Well, I thought that was pretty clear. Know. He doesn't know. <laughs> he doesn't know. Okay. Um, so yeah, we, we at the very least we need to sort of mark out. Um, so the only new one we're bringing forward is the floodplain. Right. And so we have two from two left over from fall: the payment in lieu and the definitions. And then the floodplain. So, yes, we have to get the wording together, but at least we sh we should be good to know that we need three we need to three placeholder positions articles. Okay. Yeah. the The only change I have to the to the uh, floodplain is where it says light duty truck. I simply want to define a light duty truck as. 8,500 GVW or less. Otherwise, light duty truck can mean anything from a light duty semi. You know, they could they could stretch it. They could argue this way if we simply define it in clear terms. But if we define it as truck, does that mean you can't haul it in your El Camino? Well, right now we're saying light duty truck. And if we define what a light duty truck is, the maximum GVW. I mean, you can pull it in with a Volkswagen if it'll pull it, but the yeah. maximum, but the maximum GVW to pull the, in other words, you can't pull some ninety, some big monster camper down. It's going to be, it's going to be able to be pulled by a reasonable size pickup truck. Yeah, and that that is in our current definition. So right. we will, 
just incorporate that. I'll incorporate that into the um, the RV section. Okay. Yeah, man. Does that mean you have to haul it with a pickup truck? No, you can haul it with any vehicle. Okay. But the maximum size you can use is an 8500 okay. GVW pickup. Yeah, okay. The, the way it now reads, designed to be self-propelled or permanently towable by a light-duty truck, being a truck of not more than 8,500 pounds gross vehicle weight. Right. Well, that sounds to me like it has to be a truck. <laughs> well, if you can tow it with something less, that's fine. Yeah, uh, or less. We got to put our less in. Well. You're, what we're saying no, is, if it's self-propelled, there's some mighty big push self-propelled pushers you're going to see out there, but that's okay. We're just saying you shouldn't need heralds to come down and tow it out. That that's about it. Yeah, or or a, or a ten wheel tractor or any <laughs> kind of something that big. Yeah, and sometimes there are people that pull their RVs, their campers around with a. Uh, Harold kind of a vehicle. Don't you remember Lucy and Lucy and Desi uh, and uh, Desi heading out to California in their Buick pulling their RV? <laughs> Ricky, I mean Ricky and Lucy. <laughs> so, okay. Thank you, Ken. Nice job on those things. Really appreciate it. Yeah, um, and I yeah I think that um, as the the board you know moves to town meeting, um, you know if if we're going to explore the next project that may be master plan implementation or really getting the planning board rules and regs fine are you know towards some you know making some motion movement on that, um, but yeah I guess you know I'll, I'll wait till right now it's all budget all the time yeah so and then the, select, that. the select board isn't ready to take up anything else okay okay thanks Karen. yeah um next meeting ken well we're gonna probably would be in uh early may because we're gonna have we have the MS4 regulation meeting at the end of in the end of April. Would you have something ready for the first Tuesday? May, May 4th, is that too soon? Probably not. Okay, May 18th. Um, we can we can work towards that. It, it's going to be my colleague working with, with the committee, um, but I will support that. Um, but we can Okay, I'll, I'll pencil you, we'll, we'll pencil you in for the 18th of okay. May for the next, for your next meeting with us. Okay, very good. Okay. Thank you. All right, board. Well, are you talking about anything fun tonight? No, no, we just got a few bills to pay and uh, nothing really interesting beyond that. Oh, I have some fun stuff. Oh, you do? Okay. Most of the, oh, you got the envoy, you got the check. Wonderful. Yeah. 270,000? 280. 280. Wow. Okay. Portable housing trust fund. This town meeting's on us. <laughs> <laughs> Take it. Here we come. Let me open an account for you here. I'll double it a month. Good job getting that done, Bill. Thank you. Thanks. It's uh yeah, it was a it was a slog, but uh yeah, Tom Reedy came through. I give him credit too. He had to he had to go back into his files and uh, find out what pieces were missing, and we worked together to build them up. Okay. Hey, Ken, which colleague do we expect in May? Uh, Patty Gambarini. Oh. Um, she's our environmental planner um, and has been working with many of the communities for the MS4 compliance. She's been taking care of the MS4 stuff with us, Mark. Right. Yeah, yeah. I remember her coming when we were in person. Um, uh, there's one thing, um, based on the last meeting, I, I looked into that grant application, um, from mass development, which was a technical assist, a real estate technical assistance grant that was supposed to help fund a planning and visioning of route nine. Um, this was an initiative from the town administrator, um, but I think with support from the planning board, 
um, it wasn't, it, it didn't get funded. So, um, you know, that, that's just a note for, for the board. Um, okay. So we can, you know, maybe address that if the, if the town wants to look at that, but that would help support some of your master plan um, objectives that you wanted to address um, back when you adopted the master plan. Thank you, Kim. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got a couple of bills to pay. Um, need to approve uh, paying our pay for the first quarter of this year. Don't move. Planning board step stipend. Second. Motion. motion. <laughs> I'll make the motion first that we pay the uh, planning board stipend for the period I moved January it. through March 2021. I'll yeah, moderate, I Jim. Mr. Dwyer has, has made the motion. Okay. Second. <laughs> All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Also, we have a bill, an invoice from the Daily Hampshire Gazette for $324.86 for the legal notice for the uh, Philip Price legal notice for the accessory apartment to be held or conducted at our next meeting. I would move that we pay that. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. All budget all the time. And those are the only invoices I have. Any, you have anything else, Mr. Dwyer? Are you with CS? Any other fun stuff? Uh, well, you know, I did have one uh, thing. Um, I forgot at the last meeting, uh, Tom had sent around the library sign and asked what we thought about that. And I don't know if there been anything more about it, Tom. No. You heard a peep from anybody about the library sign? Nope. Let me see if I can just uh we have the issue well you've heard at the meeting today we have the issue with the uh one-way signs there as well but <laughs> that's that's a Tom, is, it, is it true that there are no light switches in the library you can't put a light on and off by yourself <laughs> it probably is all computerized uh they should they're probably automatic so i did send this around to everyone but let me just pull Tom, it Don't up. they have breakers they can shut on and off with those lights? Of course. <laughs> so those are the light switches. Yes. Okay. So this was the proposed sign. Uh, 18 square feet, roughly. 12 foot high letters. 12 inch. Spanning 18 feet. 12 inch letters spanning 18 feet. And that would, uh, that would be on what? On the building? Sign out front. Yeah, I think it would have to be on the building at 18 feet. It says stainless steel mounting. Oh, yeah. Post. Yeah, this is what they were talking about going over the entrance uh, facing the south side, right? Yes, it's on the building. Well, what's no? Yeah. Stainless steel mounting post. Yeah, oh. that's to yeah, that's to anchor it to the side of the building. I believe it was going to be on the south face, facing the old Goodwin where the parking is, and the main entrance. Um, Black acrylic, okay. I don't know if it were, Tom, are, did, did they ask you for anything? Are they, are they asking you to approve it or? They just wanted me to run it by and make sure, you know, kind of your blessing. I just, it, it's a, you know, showing more of the property. So it, it, it uh, you know, I told them I didn't have a problem, but I wanted to run it by you as well. And Well, it seems about as basic as you can get, but. I mean, I guess I want to see it identifies the property. It's only more for as far as public safety that 
if somebody didn't know what it was, it would only help for that. So a good Protestant sign. <laughs> I guess I don't have any problem with it. Yeah, I don't see a problem. Why don't you make a make a motion, Mr. Dwyer? I'll make a motion to approve the library signage. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion approved. And then go to Tom. One other thing, actually, that Tom brought up. Uh, we have this development team meeting this afternoon, and um, the pet hotel is talking ab about putting another door in the back. And I recall that they did come in to see us within the last year about getting some sort of a outdoor area. Anybody remembering that? They, no, had a, they had a concrete slab they had poured outside the back door and they... Hmm. Was that for a picnic table or was that for the pet use? I don't know. What... I, rem I remember them mentioned, there was something they mentioned about something going outside there. I don't think they ever came in formally, they just sent that around. The only question I have is, What's it going to be used for and when? Because if they're going to be bringing critters out there, I mean, there's a lot of uh, houses around. And if they're going to be barking dogs or whatever it's going to be, that would be my only concern. Chief Spink enables the one, because I set the meeting up to, to go over the new door and the um, the pads existing and to put this chain leaf fence up. And he, he recalls one of the abutters had a problem with the noise of the animals and thought that that's why they were required inside. And he, he couldn't find any of that information. That's why he, he had recommended, I rec, you know, ask you what you guys thought about this. Yeah. When we had the public hearing, <clears throat> there was concerns from the abutters about noise. So the building is really made quite sound resistant um, to keep the noises of the of the critters inside the building and not going outside, and if they're going to start bringing critters outside, like you know, what does that mean? Like one dog, ten dogs barking, cats. I you know I I don't know. Um, I understand they want to get the critters some fresh air, but on the other hand, it's in a residential area. They're, they're abutting a lot of residences around them. You're right, Jim. They brought in the acoustical engineer that was very impressive. Uh, remember, he took readings uh, every six hours, and uh, it, he, he was reassuring to the neighbors, too, that the dogs would be kept inside and they couldn't hear them bark. Yeah. So I think it's going to come down to what their plan is. If they're going to take one dog out at a time, that's one thing. If they're going to put multiples out it's may need to review it again i putting one more door on the back of the building you know technically it's a trigger for site plan approval but it's sort of a waste of everyone's time to make someone come in to talk about one door right yeah, yeah it's, it's like what are they going to use it for they're going to be used if there's a patty out there that we like you know instead of repeating it you know where we're coming from So Mike and I are doing a site visit with the contractor, I think it's Thursday at 1030. So I'll get get some more ideas from them and, and then I'll bring it back to our meeting on Tuesday. So okay. um, give Mr. Dwyer a heads up on what their intention is. Okay, that's fine. Okay, and you know, it's, as always, it's so much easier to pop into a Zoom meeting that, um, you know, I don't want to just make work for everyone, but at the same time, if there's any borderline things, let them come in and explain what they're going to do or invite them to come in and explain what they're going to do. I appreciate that because I'm going to be getting the complaints later on this if, if it is, becomes an issue. <laughs> yeah, and how do you address some of this once, once it's out there already after the fact, that's a, that's a difficult one to try to enforce. Okay. And I didn't know if there was any, another thing that Mike had brought up, was there any concern with the waste? I mean, everything's contained inside and all. Now, if you have them outside and, and you know, the wash, I, I, you know, didn't know if there was any concern at the 
original review with that as well. So well, again, yeah, I'll, again, what are they going to do? They're going to hose it down. You're, you're right. So we have that. We have that problem up near uh, Randy Iser's place. Remember the outside hosing right. it down? They had to go into the sewer system. Yeah. Luckily, that one was never built. They moved to Northampton. Right. The uh, where's all of our buddies from the riverfront, Bill? Nobody's here today. They're they're, they're just as happy as clams with us. <laughs> Oh, with us, yeah. <laughs> the selectman meeting was a different story. Yeah, that was Bill. a real cool. That was a real cool Bill. Bill. Good job. The, uh, <laughs> the the conservation commission has been invited to join the select board meeting tomorrow night right. to explain themselves. In response to so, the Gazette, Gazette article, or uh, <laughs> no, it was actually building from uh, last week. There were there were direct complaints made to the select board about the pricing it, that the gazette article is based on uh last week's uh select board meeting okay that's where scott mersbach got got the idea for the story i mean everything that they have to do they were supposed to have been doing for the last quite a few years but all of all the uh things for lack of a better term have not been enforced as much now they're going to be enforced for a variety of reasons and yeah there's going to be some there's going to be some i'm so sure there's going to be some complaining but that that will be a uh that'll be a lively meeting yes. tomorrow night <laughs> but i'll be live on tv right yes it's also, on, it's also on youtube yeah, you can, uh, YouTube, in case you can't watch, you can watch it later on YouTube, just like our meetings. Yeah. Yep. Or you can, the, you can go join the meeting by Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. If you really want a ringside seat. Well, I've been going to the meetings because it does seem that at least every other meeting, if not every meeting, there is some planning related question. And being able to attend this way really is a, it's a great time saver because you can see people going off down a tangent that they don't understand what's going on, but they're assuming something and they're going off on a tangent. And if you can jump in and say, no, that's not what the bylaw says, um, it saves a lot, of, um, a lot of cleanup work for everyone. That's good. Ken, I, I do admire your choice of uh, shirt pattern. Yes. Apparently someone got the menu about blue check. <laughs> <laughs> so I have nothing else. Okay. Anybody have anything? Motion to adjourn. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Reading is history. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. And thank you, John. Thanks, Tom. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.